Hello everyone, I'm Mike Gaffney, and I will be giving this talk with Sushmitha Gurumala. Sushmitha and I are both engineers on the Boundary team. We are here today to discuss what's new in Boundary, our secure remote access solution, and what's coming soon. Along the way, we've got demos for you, plus we'll give you a sneak peek at some unreleased functionality that is coming soon. But first, let's recap where Boundary fits into the HashiCorp picture. HashiCorp builds automation tools for the various workflows in the application delivery lifecycle. Whether developers or DevOps engineers are going to need to access their app's infrastructure, when they do, organizations need to ensure that the access itself is securely granted just in time, and also that the level of access and authorization a user receives follows a granular, least privileged posture where privileges are based on the identity of the user in question. We can see that Vault follows this model in its ability to tightly control access to target credentials based on client identity. Boundary takes that value prop a step further by securely monitoring and managing the user sessions that those credentials are used to create. Over the last year, we've invested heavily in a streamlined workflow for secure access management with an intuitive CLI and desktop support for Linux, Windows, and Mac. In addition, we offer support for the IDP of your choice, including connections to all identity providers that offer OIDC connectivity. In this talk, we're going to showcase how our recent investments create an access on-demand workflow. Specifically, we'll showcase dynamic credential management of boundary sessions with HashiCorp Vault. We'll look at Boundary's enhancements for observability, and then finally, preview our new dynamic host catalog capabilities for automating the discovery of cloud resources. So let's talk about enabling dynamic credential management and how it fits into Boundary's domain model. In Boundary, a target represents a network service available on one or more hosts that a user can connect to and interact with through Boundary. The hosts available to a target come from host sets, which are collections of hosts considered equivalent from an access control point of view. A host catalog contains both hosts and host sets. Targets and host catalogs are created inside projects. A target can only give access to hosts owned by the host catalogs in the same project. This structure allows operators to delegate different administrative tasks to other users. For example, an operator could create a project with a host catalog of all the database hosts in an organization available to the project and then delegate the creation of host sets and targets to someone else. We know that when a user connects to a target, they will need credentials, like a username and password, to log in. So to make your systems more secure and enhance your user's experience, we've integrated Boundary with HashiCorp's Vault to get these credentials and manage them securely. We leverage Vault's Secrets Engine in Boundary to create dynamic credentials and return them to the user. And once the user session has ended, we revoke the credentials through Vault. To do this, an operator creates a Vault credential store inside a project and gives it a Vault token. The operator then creates a credential library for each path in Vault the project needs credentials from. And then finally, the operator associates those credential libraries with the appropriate targets. Attaching credentials to a target allows operators to define what users can connect to and what they can do once they have connected. We are really excited to show dynamic credential management in action. Here to do that is my teammate, Sushmitha. Thank you, Mike. Let's dive right in by taking a high-level look at our growing organization. We currently have two product lines, Northwind and South Seas. In our organization's boundary deployment, we configure these as projects with access to database targets and associated credential stores. Each product line has a sales analytics team that focuses on exploring product data for upcoming advertising campaigns. We also have a single production support team they handle any and all support requests, not just from the analytics team, but also from across the organization. Many of us have experience with this workflow. We interact in various capacities within the same targets. We use our own preferred tools to connect to such targets. We spend years mastering our tools. 
Connecting our tools to the organizational systems we support should be frictionless, feeling natural. It should just work. Now let's see how introducing Boundary's dynamic credential management augments such workflows. Let's start by exploring a Boundary deployment for such an org. Here we're seeing an overall project view. Each product line has a project and there's a separate project for our production support team. Now how will operators have configured the Northbend product line in our Boundary deployment for the sales analytics team? Let's explore it for details. Within each project, operators can define targets, host catalogs, credential stores, and view all sessions to targets. A varied list of targets have been configured, some for our online storefronts, some for our brick and mortar storefronts, and one for databases. I'll dig into the Northwind database target in particular. We're seeing basic details about the target here. This database target is hooked into an analyst credential library of type vault. This credential library is configured specifically for people with read-only access or analyst access to the Northwind product line database, as indicated in the vault path. Now, how would I, as a sales analyst, as an end user, use such a deployment to generate my monthly report? Through Boundary's brilliant desktop app. Our desktop client is specifically built to focus on providing end users access to targets that they've been authorized for and allowed to connect to. For the purpose of this demo, I'm logged in as an administrator of the org so that I can easily switch between various targets and to get a full powerful view of targets across my org. As a sales analytics user, I'm interested specifically in the Northwind database target belonging through Northwind product line. All I have to do to connect to this specific target is to click on this nice big connect button. Behind the scenes, a lot of work happens. Boundary selects a host within the target, connects to Vault, and requests a new database credentials. Before anything happens, Boundary first does an authorization check for the user. Then Vault does an authorization check on the Vault token from the credential store for the operation requested on the Vault path within the credential library. Once this succeeds, Vault generates a new database username and password, connects to the target database, and executes necessary query to create a new database account. Vault then returns the newly minted credentials to Boundary. Boundary then associates the returned lease ID for the new credentials within the new Boundary session. Once session credentials are returned, the desktop app then creates a local proxy which connects to one of the Boundary workers, passing session credentials which the worker then verifies. Once verified, the worker establishes a connection to the database host. Boundary will also continue to renew the vault lease for the credentials as long as the session is active. Local proxy information and all credentials for the session are then displayed for me on the desktop. Everything I need to connect to my tools to the database is here. Now, how would I use this information? by simply pressing the copy button for each attribute and then pasting it into the relevant spot in my preferred tool. In my database tool, I paste local proxy config, update database name to Northwind, and copy my credentials into username and password fields. Now that I'm connected as an analyst, I can run my monthly report. I love that I don't have to remember to store my credentials because if I need to connect to this target again, all I have to do is go back to my desktop client and generate a new connection. I can do this as many times as I want. At this particular moment, a partial outage has been detected with Northwind online storefronts. The production support team is alerted with the severity one incident. Team members are checking all services and someone needs administrative access to the database. Every minute counts, our site is down. Remember, the production support team needs to access databases with elevated credentials, unlike analysts. Before we look at how a production support team member will use Boundary to connect to targets that might be causing the outage, let's go back to our Boundary deployment and look at the production support project configuration. As this is a production support project, we can see various targets from all of our product lines. Let's dive right into Northwind Prod database target and its credential sources. Unlike the Northwind product line's analyst credential library, here we have support credential library that maps to an entirely different vault path. Based on the vault path, we can infer that this target has elevated permissions. 
Time is of essence. Our outage is still happening. Because I'm using Boundary as a production support member, don't need to open any tickets to get access to the database for investigation. I don't need to get any special credentials to be created for it. I don't need to figure out how long I will need elevated credentials for. I'll simply access the Boundary desktop app just like before. All I have to do is select the right target for the outage investigation. I'm going to select the Northwind Prod database target and production support project and connect to it. A new local proxy and credentials are generated and displayed. I'll copy my proxy and credential details for my database tool. Once I go through entering this information, I can start investigating the outage. Even with elevated credentials to the database, I don't have to remember any credentials or connection details or worry about securing them. So let's say the incident has been resolved. I'll go ahead and close my session. My credentials will simply be revoked now that I have terminated my session. To do that, I'll go back to my desktop app. I'll navigate through a list of all of my sessions, find my current one to terminate. In addition to terminating boundary worker connection, my credentials will also be revoked. So if I attempt to go back to my database and run any new queries, I'll encounter connection errors. To recap, I was able to connect to the same database host with different credentials and within different projects, potentially managed by different operational teams with no wait time. In all of this, as an end user, I never had to worry about my credentials. I don't need to make sure I rotate them on a regular basis. And I don't need to worry if my tools are storing credentials insecurely. This fundamentally changes the way I work and the overhead I have when working within an organization with numerous hosts and countless credentials. I'd like to invite Mike back to talk about Boundary's operational observability across these workflows. Thank you, Sushmitha. You've just seen a ton of new functionality that we've added to Boundary. But one thing you haven't seen yet is happening behind the scenes. Boundary is now emitting observability events. These are, there are currently three types of events available, and the fourth one for audits is in preview. As always, privacy and security are of paramount importance in Boundary. We built our audit eventing infrastructure from the ground up to support this. Every audit attribute in Boundary supports a data sensitivity classification tag. Any attribute missing this tag is classified at the highest sensitivity level. So by default, everything is treated as a secret unless explicitly tagged otherwise. Having this level of granularity allows individual attributes to be encrypted and or redacted per sync per event. Here's an example of an audit event in the cloud events format for an authentication request. Notice the ID attribute for this event. Each event is given a unique ID. Now I want to zoom in on the response. Take a look at the token attribute. You'll notice the word redacted appears in the middle of it. That is because authentication tokens are classified as secret data and this event sync has been configured with a filter that redacts secret data. There are many other options available for our event sync filters, and we think they provide operators with some powerful options for controlling the output of their event data. Lastly, we're very excited to announce the upcoming availability of Boundary Dynamic Host Catalogs. Dynamic Host Catalogs automate the discovery and configuration of hosts from infrastructure providers, such as Microsoft Azure or AWS, and service registries, such as console or Kubernetes. This is a core part of Boundary's access on demand workflow, freeing operators from having to manually configure targets for cloud native dynamic infrastructure. With dynamic host sets, hosts are populated with operator defined filters based on the attributes of the host, such as the region, tag, or type of the resource. Catalogs are run as plugins on Boundary and we plan to open the ecosystem to partner and community contributed catalogs for their platforms and resources of choice. At launch, Boundary will initially support catalogs for Microsoft Azure and AWS. To give you a look at the power of dynamic host catalogs, we'd love to walk you through creating an Azure host catalog and showcase how Boundary automates the discovery of hosts for secure connections. For that, I will hand things back over to Sushmitha. Thank you, Mike. 
Here's a list of four virtual machines on Azure for my organization. All four of the machines are of service type database, but individual ones are tagged to our Northwind and South Seas product lines using application tag. To configure these Azure hosts to a dynamic host catalog in our boundary deployment, let's connect to the boundary server through our CLI. I'll authenticate to the server and create a plugin-based host catalog of type Azure. Because plugins need to be able to handle arbitrary attributes and secrets, Boundary team has spent a good amount of time with the CLI to make sure it's as easy as possible to define these, while still ensuring plugins can count on type safety and easily validate incoming values. This includes the ability to directly pull attribute values from files or as seen here, environment variables. Once the host catalog is created, I can see plugin information in my CLI output. Now that we've defined the host catalog, which contains the information necessary to make authorized calls for today's Azure API, my next step is to create a host set within the catalog. I'll create it with a filter for service type tag name that maps to database value. Since all of my Azure virtual machines are of this specific service type, this host set will include all four machines I have in Azure. To configure my Northwind and South Seas product line host sets, I'll create another host set within my catalog that maps to the application tag name of Northwind, and I'll do it again for application tag name of South Seas. I have essentially configured three host sets within my catalog, one to sync all of my database machines, one to sync my Northwind product line machines, and one for my South Seas product line machines. Let's explore host set filtering on the service type tag. I'll do a read on the set, which will fetch the current matching host from Azure. As we can see, there are four hosts that match the filter, each mapped to an identifier within boundary. Now let's take a look at the other two. This host set has hosts that match the Northwind application type, whereas the next one matches hosts with South Seas application type. We can see that each is showing two matching hosts and further that the host IDs are distinct subsets of the four total host IDs. We can now use these in targets to allow connections to these distinct set of hosts. As we are in a cloud environment, machines can come and go. To see how this reflects in our boundary deployment, let's shut down a machine in Azure. I'll navigate back to my portal and stop one of my South Seas virtual machine and refresh first status. Once the machine has been successfully stopped, I'll query two of my host sets. One host set that is filtering for all database hosts and one for the South Seas product line. As you can see, we are down to three total hosts in the full set and one in the more constrained set. Now let's go back and boot it up in our Azure portal. Once it's back up, let's refresh our host set to see our total host in the full set go back up to four hosts and more constrained set to two hosts. As you can see, we now have a full complement of hosts represented in the appropriate sets once again. With the use of dynamic host catalogs, keeping targets up to date to reflect the operational state of my cloud infrastructure is easy. This benefits not only boundary operators, but also end users as targets will have the most up-to-date hosts available for connectivity. Now that we have seen dynamic host catalogs in action, I'll invite Mike back to close out this session. Thank you, Sushmitha. We covered a lot of new functionality today. We showed you dynamic credential management, our observability events, and finally, we gave you a preview of our upcoming dynamic host catalogs. Thank you for joining us. Please check out the Boundary website for more information and give Boundary a try. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of HashiConf.